Welcome to Pal Ponder Ultra. We've got a ton of snow on the way and some big storms that will be coming for your Sunday through early next week time frame. But let's take a look at the overall season to date snowfall totals and where we stand so far for this winter, dating back all the way since October the 1st. And you can see on the graph, the legend of the bottom of the screen here and notice this little dryer slot that's going to be a little bit more favorable area where we could likely pick up some heavier snows with this next system that will be on the way so this is my second channel this is the pal ponder ultra where i do extra content my main channel is pal ponder on weather if you are new here make sure you're, you hit the subscribe button this channel is dedicated to weather analysis and some educational content and we'll be going over a dynamic cooling snowstorm that will be taking place for that Sunday to Tuesday time frame. But here's the last three days of snowfall. We've been seeing these record dynamics coming in from the West Coast, heavy rainfall and then heavy snow across the Sierras. Flagstaff picked up several feet of snow in the last couple of days all that heavier snows into the intermountain west regions but we'll finally start to enter portions of the southern plains and folks right around the texas panhandle should start to get some heavier snows into that sunday time frame it's all complements of this jet stream this is a massive pretty dip in the jet stream that's going to allow finally some of that colder air to kind of sneak in from the west and try to enter into our central u.s and it's all going to be lifting and taking advantage of this lift associated with this with this dynamic jet streak that will be coming across so we should have some severe storms on the southeast corridor and then we're going to have kind of a chillier rain in the middle but we are going to have a low pressure center likely going to be forming in and around the texas panhandle and a very dynamic cooling setup snowstorm that will likely unfold during the day on Sunday. So if we take a look at that vorticity map, you can see kind of the hook, at, hook shape that will be starting to come to fruition. The further this digs, the more energy it's gonna be able to pull up and it tends to go negatively tilted. You can actually see this a little bit better on the 500 uh, knots here of this pretty intense jet streak on the south southern flank here you can almost see kind of an eye shape that is the low pressure center in the closed low that will likely be forming but always on the southeast corridor that's where you have to be looking at for the dirty side the severe weather side the higher dew point side where all the higher water content the moisture is going to be laid in the warm sector that's where we've got to be concerned about those severe storms including actually some tornadoes is a possibility down here into the southeast corridor of texas into louisiana back into mississippi but here's another map we've got the vertical velocity index and i look at this because we always have to have upward rising motion air to produce you know rain or snow and you've got a lot of it right here so you know this system it's got the same piece of energy that came from the west coast so you already kind of know this has a lot of water high content value to it so once it hits the southern plains and takes advantage of that vertical lift you see the darker blues and teal shaded colors the more intense that color is the more intense that vertical lift and that means upward rising motion air the further the air is able to rise the more intense the precipitation will likely be and that's exactly what's going to unfold and here's the unique process what's likely going to happen i'm going to explain this uh, new atmospheric dynamics when you whenever you get like a negatively tilted trough and you get some of this this upper level trough that tends to be stronger on the west and northwest sides like we have and a close low with that upward rising motion air heavier precipitation and especially and the form of snow tends to cool the atmosphere as it falls and as that does fall from the top down that is a process known as dynamic cooling so we are going to be seeing that heavier precipitation that snow likely to cool all the layers of the atmosphere and as it does that usually takes over and has that transferring from a rainy system into a big time snow producer and likely in those type dynamics you tend to get these 
heavy, wet, large snowflakes, these globe-like snowflakes that come out of the sky. And that's just only for a short period of time because it's taking advantage of those like intense dynamics directly overhead. So as that process cools, it's starting to freeze all layers of the atmosphere and eventually lower to the ground. And that's where we have all snow and all layers. And that's where the snow can be pretty quick, you know, pretty intense, but typically for a short period of time. So as this moves through and that forcing moves through and as it moves through on the other side, that tends to weaken. So sometimes after that process ends, then sometimes it can actually change back over to rain. And yeah, it can essentially kind of create its own environment that will be favorable for snow. So it's a kind of a unique setup that will be unfolding across the Texas panhandle, you know, into those areas of Crandon, Oklahoma, heading into that Sunday time frame. You can see that dynamic cooling process and in, in, in shape here at the surface Look at the warm sector. This is around, you know, right around noontime on Sunday. You got plenty of warm temperatures, almost 70 degrees there into the Southeast corridor, into Southeast Texas, back into North Texas around 60. But look at the panhandle, right? They're right at freezing, if not, if not below freezing, right there at 29 within the Amarillo region. That is that dynamic cooling taking place and that could lead to some very heavy snowfall. I mean, we're talking like wet, like really large, those globe-like type snowflakes falling out of the sky. And it can be pretty intense for several hours, at least as this system comes through, as we have a closed low right around the Dallas Fort Worth area with just kind of a chillier rain for them. But right there to the west and northwest quadrant are there, it's going to be all heavy snow into the Texas panhandle, into the western Oklahoma panhandle, back into, I think some of this reaches central Oklahoma, but it should be just a chillier rain on the eastern side of Oklahoma. And as this continues to move through, that, that uh, dynamic cooling process continues to take shape. So, yes, it likely starts around you know, sometime during the day on Sunday, it could lead into your Sunday night. This is Super Bowl Sunday, folks. So pretty cool watching the game. If you're out there in the Texas Panhandle, looking out your window with those big snowflakes coming out of the sky, and it could amount some to some pretty heavy totals. I mean, obviously these aren't going to be ten to one ratios. It's likely going to be in the five to seven range. But yeah, we got a lot of warm air, right? Warm ground temperatures, but that process will cool the atmosphere from the top down and the dynamic cooling will kind of make its own environment. And that's exactly what's going to unfold with this kind of a unique system that will be taking place late this weekend into early next week. But it's all about the heavier rains as we go into the Southeast, but unfortunately severe storms with that higher dew point and higher temperature and higher cape values. This is your convective available potential energy and a right around 2000. I mean, typical, a typical thunderstorm is right around 500. So this is about three or four times and then your typical average thunderstorms. That's why the Storm Prediction Center does in fact have a slight risk for that severe storms going to that daytime hours on Sunday. I've already kind of showed you the temperatures down there you know, right around 70. Obviously, that's not normal typically for for uh, for the month of February, but the dynamics are there. We could get some severe storms. And right now we have a 15% chance within this yellow shaded area. That typically means about a 15% of this area has the possibility of seeing those strong storms and turning severe, likely some 60 mile per hour winds, some uh, quarter size hail, if not larger, and an isolated tornado or two is not out of the question during that daytime hours on Sunday. But here's the precipitation it's got to work with on that Sunday time frame. So yeah, so further to the south, you'll have that convective banding. So some of these areas could pick up easily two to three inches of heavier rainfall right there down here there in the southeast where they picked up a lot of rain as of late back into Louisiana. I mean, before you were kind of begging for rain. Now you're begging for it to stop and it won't stop and it continues to rain. 
two to two to four inches another two to four inch swath we come in your area into louisiana and the mississippi back into alabama but that's where the heavier snows will likely fall back into the texas panhandle but even for the dallas warworth area it's more of a chillier rain but it could pick up another inch of rain during that daytime hours on that you know saturday night into sunday time frame but as it moves through heading into that sunday morning to monday morning time frame or you know, going more into Monday, it moves the precipitation further off into the southeast, picking up those areas into the Carolinas by now, reaching into Tennessee, reaching into Kentucky, and reaching the corridors of you know Arkansas into Missouri, back into Illinois, back into Indiana, and if we continue to expand, that will shift heading into that Tuesday time frame highlighted over the Carolinas into Virginia, back into West Virginia through Pennsylvania and those areas into the Northeast with that precipitation. So what's all gonna fall is snow. So here's the latest European track. And again, this could be a pretty dynamic system right under that system, right where the West Northwest quadrant is, it's gonna lay down some pretty heavy snow in its path so it's you know this is going to lay down a pretty good swath from the texas panhandle through oklahoma you know through portions of arkansas through missouri back into southern illinois into indiana as well as portions of ohio then eventually head off into into the mid-atlantic and heading into the northeast if we look at the gfs it's a tightly a little bit further south it does actually include some of that snow reaching as far south as Tennessee or Kentucky, but it's more or less gonna be in the same corridor right around this zone where it's gonna create its own environment for snow. So you don't really get these systems that often, but they that can happen in these late season transitional periods where we're moving out, coming, you know, from winter to spring type, those type areas, you typically get these type of time frames because the temperature is right at that sweet spot. I say the sweet spot because it's right at that freezing or it could be even 34 or 35 degrees in some of these areas, but now it has a lot of higher water content value to it as well. So you tend to get these big, just significant, heavy, likely globe-like snowflakes with it. So overall, if you break down the, the rainfall totals over the next seven days, you finally get a breakout west. I mean, it's they're gonna be starting to dry out at least for a short period before the rain comes back for those areas. They'll take a they'll take a respite, but all that all that energy is now highlighted across the southeast. So yes, this area is gonna easily pick up another two to four inches of heavier rainfall likely from that sunday through through that tuesday time frame and here's the latest drought index we've taken a major dent in the drought especially of those areas across the southeast if you're with me a couple of months ago almost the entire state of louisiana and mississippi are almost in an exceptional drought you can't find anywhere in the united states it's in an exceptional drought almost even an extreme drought so it's taken a major dent across the last couple of of uh, months obviously there's no dent whatsoever no, no snow drought whatsoever with all those events that happen across the west coast we still need some help across portions of the south southwest which they're getting it this week so that will be updated next week with the with those additional rainfall and snow totals up here but overall we've have taken a, a pretty good dent in the drought over the last couple of months so it is is improving but we definitely need some help in some of these areas so guys i appreciate you guys uh watching do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch the next update why i protect you before and after the storm